This review is brought to you by Slim Jim. The Devil May Cry series debuted in 2001 and it reinvigorated the hack and slash genre with the use of guns and the stylish combos you could seemingly chain into eternity. Now we're in 2013 and it's getting a reboot, but most of the attention seems to be centering on the redesign of the central character Dante. He's no longer the platinum haired biker who says badass things. He's got dark hair, who wears a tank top. Does that mean he's an emo milk toast? Segue into this! You wanna fight? I like it rough. Personally, I would have preferred an emo Dante. He would have been quieter. I'm taking you off the air. Devil May Cry, or DMC if you're busy, has returned and sets forth to honor the dubious legacy of its predecessors with fast-paced combat focusing on chain combos, a secular reappropriation of Judeo-Christian mythology, and a main character who, while distinct from the original, is every bit an empty adolescent power fantasy. Bad day for a hangover. Hell may not be other people. It may be just spending 15 hours with him. Get your filthy fucking claw off my trailer. When Dante isn't yammering, being affected, or just plain surly, there's some fun to be had in Devil May Cry. And the game makes a point to give you many tools to dispense enemies with. At any time, you have access to three melee weapons and one range. Dante begins with and always has access to his sword, Rebellion. In addition, he has one angelic and one demonic weapon, which are selected by the right and left triggers. Each weapon has a fast and strong launching attacks, as well as grab and pull mechanics, in addition to a nice array of unlockable combos. Suffice to say, you have a lot to play with here. And even with the more accessible combos, you can pull off some visually impressive moves that are truly satisfying. The more complex combos feel reserved for a more particular and dexterous set of players. The combat is so fast that clarity of thought is required to identify the right opportunity to execute such moves, and amidst all the chaos, those moments are infrequent. Late in the game, when switching between weapons becomes more essential, a slight delay in depressing the trigger and getting the corresponding weapon to respond does become an issue. A host of suave, death-dealing moves is meaningless without a strong variety of enemies to practice on, and DMC does a nice job of providing the player with a collection of oddball demon spawns to tear apart. While the enemies never cease to look interesting, as the game progresses, newer baddies begin to require specific weapons and attacks to take them down. In this instance, Evil Avatar Lady needs one attack from one particular angelic weapon to break down her shield. This nasty oversized toddler only can be injured in the belly, and this fellow is only vulnerable in the back. This guy is red, so use a demonic weapon. He's blue, so go angelic. It's unfortunate that as you're obtaining new weapons and expanding the moveset for them, the game is insistent on narrowing your options. The combat system feels the most invigorating when there's a lot of enemies on screen and you fly ever so gracefully between them. The later game focuses more on grouping together two or three high-level enemies who require particular attacks from separate weapons at select moments. It's hard, but not in a fun way, and the process starts to feel turgid and sluggish and lacks any sense of surprise or invention. I found myself returning to earlier levels to recapture the sense of fun and discovery in the combat at the beginning of the game. The levels themselves are a mixed bag. The game primarily takes place in DMC's odd iteration of Limbo, more or less an excuse to take the already arbitrary and bizarro Earth of the game and make it all the more arbitrary and bizarro. Warehouses become warehouses with floating platforms. The carnival becomes more evil and malevolent. While it can be visually impressive, they tend to have minimal bearing on the gameplay, becoming just a background that reinforces the tone that this place is crazy. Just doing God's work. This conceit does allow for some fun and challenging platforming sequences, especially this instance that makes television graphics your primary obstacle, an effective metaphor for my previous career. Outside of that and a few other key sequences, the environments become increasingly uninspired the more the game goes on. Where the game truly proves itself to be alienating is the writing. I will rip open his chest with my bare hands and feast on his beating heart. To be fair, Ninja Theory has made this the most understandable Devil May Cry game, but it works to the game's disadvantage because it highlights how uninteresting it is. So that's what this is about. You need me to fight the demons, help you save the world. 
The world is run by demons that mankind can't see, enslaving them with mind control that will be revelatory to anyone who hasn't seen They Live or The Matrix. He controls everything. Tamundus, the world is a factory farm for human souls. Dante and Virgil, reunited brothers who dress from different aisles at H&M, are born of demon and angel parents. And they are the only two that can defeat Hell's forces, and so they set out to do so. We are Nephilim. The only ones that can slay the Demon King. Good. The narrative just proceeds where it will, without any accountability to logic or character development. Dante, wait! It's working. You can fight him now. It's how this game is written that's the real issue. Yes, there's an emergency gate. I'll take you there. Let's go. No, not yet. What? Nearly every line of dialogue set my teeth on edge. You said you'd been here before. Yes, but it was during an out-of-body experience years ago. It's adolescent. Put a spin on this. It's puerile. Nothing left but to grab it by the hair, bend it over, and... <sighs> and it's nowhere near as clever and sassy as the game thinks it is. What's more confusing is that this opening sequence, while not that funny, gives the sense that the game has a tongue-in-cheek attitude towards its content, but it quickly shifts gears into something far more sincere. Such weapons can win battles, but not the war. Mainly, it's one-liners and overblown action moments Trouble. Give me a minute. that make the game feel like it sprang from the imagination of a 12-year-old who just discovered his older brother's collection of heavy metal magazines. Look, this is the opening credits, and we wonder why games are hard-pressed to be regarded as art. It's a shame given Ninja Theory's track record with game writing, especially 2010's Enslaved. While it seems to honor the harebrained writing of the original series, it doesn't do anything with it, be it commentary on a classic game design or the marketing of the male image. Ebony, Ivory, I miss you girls. Here, it's just an indulgence in antisocial tropes. More of a loner type. And is the video game equivalent of a teenager saying, meh. Your point? DMC Devil May Cry is a good game lost in a juvenile tantrum. It may be acceptable to a unique demographic, but for many others, it's a game you might only want to play when no one else is around. I don't know my mother, but if you're calling me a son of a bitch, you wouldn't be the first. A three out of five. Rewind a bit, who are you again? So, yeah, didn't exactly float my boat. I do have a funny feeling though that this is going to be getting review scores are all across the map, and I have a feeling you're gonna wanna add your two cents in as well. Perhaps you're doing it right now. Well, that's down below, but make sure to see future reviews by subscribing to Rev3 Games at youtube.com slash Rev3 Games. And I'll see you again soon with another opinion.